Hello, friends. My name is Frank Stewart, and I'm the senior pastor of the Acts Ministries. I want to talk to you today about something that is very near and dear to my heart. It is one of the great passions of the Acts Ministries that is combating the number one plague in this country, the plague of all plagues and the epidemic of all epidemics. It is called father deficiency. Or many would say fatherlessness, but father deficiency goes a little beyond just being fatherless. It goes where one does not receive the necessary vitamins, the daddy vitamin that they need from their fathers. Just listen to a few of these statistics and see if you would not agree. These statistics translating to children from fatherless homes are five times more likely to commit suicide, 32 times more likely to run away. 20 times more likely to have behavior disorders, 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substance, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison for just a few statistics. We want you to join us in the month of June as we celebrate Father's Day. We're going to have many events during the month of June, seminars. We're going to have marches. We're going to have book signings and different events. We ask that you would go to... Our website, AxeMinistryOnline.org, so you can receive a schedule of all the events that we're going to be doing in the month of June. Will you help us combat this number one plague in this country? God bless you. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Well, welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast as we're looking at Pentecost, finishing up Pentecost after a few weeks of study of the day of Pentecost and what Pentecost simply means. Just simply mean 50th. We're trying to take that mysterious Twilight Zone effect out of it. So it's some things we're looking at here as we study. I think we established in the book of Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 11, there was a group of people said it was the wonderful works of God. In verse 13 of chapter 2, some began to mock and make fun. It was obvious they were saying it was not of God. So you have two schools of thoughts. And 2,000 years later, we're still having the same debate about uh, tongues. Uh, the Bible not only answers, asked the question uh, in chapter 2, verse 12. Verse 12, they said, what does this mean? Uh, because you do have two groups of people saying two quite two quite different things. They are speaking totally two different things. They're looking at the same thing, but they got two different opinions of the same thing. So since that was like that, Peter had to answer. The Bible answered what was going on, and what was going on was that it was already written in the Word of God that this day would happen, and that's what Peter uh, quoted to the people on the day of Pentecost. And after doing that, uh, 3,000 souls uh, decided to make the Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior and was baptized and received the Holy Spirit. So so when you look at that, when you look at that, it wasn't so much the speaking in tongues or the other gifts. What it was is that they understood that this was a prophecy that had been fulfilled. And whenever you see prophecy fulfilled, brothers and sisters, there should be a reaction to it. I want you to know that there should be a reaction to it. There are so many prophecies that are being fulfilled in these last days, from blood moons to different things that we're seeing that are unusual to earthquakes and hurricanes and many, many disasters. When we see these things happening, there should be a response to whenever we see the word of God being fulfilled from Israel going back into their homeland and so forth and so on. But they had a response to the prophecy of Joel, and they responded by saying, yes, we believe this is of God, and they were added to the church, and they were baptized. So so this prophecy that that Peter talked about, that Joel had wrote about, 
and he began to tell them that this was it. This is the thing that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So here, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where he's talking about order in the church, chapter 12, he talks about the gifts in the church. Chapter 13, he really deals with the fruit of the Spirit, not so much the gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. And that fruit is love or charity, agape. So you have chapter 12, chapter 13, and we move into chapter 14 dealing with order, dealing with the order in the church. And that's why he says in verse 1, pursue love, that's chapter 13, and desire spiritual gifts, that's chapter number 12. And we go into this. Now, we started on this yesterday, and we've been walking through this verse by verse. And he gives it, he gives so many examples. He makes this so very, very simple. And he keeps, he keeps reiterating, keeps giving examples so that we can understand what is going on uh, in, in the church where there are gifts. In the Corinthian church where a very gifted church, very gifted church, uh, many things was out of order. Uh, you can be very, very gifted, but yet lack uh, spiritual maturity, and we see that in Corinth. So he says in verse 13, and I'm going to start in verse 13, Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So he doesn't, say that, he doesn't say that this is something that shouldn't be done. He says just make sure you know what you're saying and make sure you know how to interpret. Now the one thing that is said here is that said here that many people miss and it's very obvious that if you're speaking in a language and you don't know how to interpret it's obvious it's not a language you were educated to these are supernatural gifts this is not something they learned so here this is a gift that they are not educated with and that's why he said pray pray not get educated to know it not go and take that language but you need to pray that God would give you the understanding what you were saying, what you were speaking. So in verse 14, he says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. I know my spirit is praying, but my, I don't know what I'm praying. Now, so when you get into this, you must already understand, because he's talking, he's not talking to babes, he's talking to people that have an understanding of the Word of God. When you get to Corinthians and when, when you read the Bible, there is an assumption that you have read the Word of God. You have read the Old Testament. You get in the New Testament, it's just assumed that you know that. So they speak, they speak as if you've already been acquainted and that you do know the Word of God. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in actsministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So here he says, he says to them, I'm praying in tongues, but my understanding is, is, is unfruitful. I mean, I don't know what I'm praying. Well, I don't know what I'm speaking in tongues. So he says, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. And I will also pray with the understanding. So he says you can pray in the spirit. But when you get through praying in the spirit, pray that you, God, what did I just pray? Because these are supernatural gifts. Now, this is the Bible. This is what the word of God is saying. Because if it was something that you was educated to, you'll be able to interpret it. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. There are folks that sing in tongues. It's a language. They sing in tongue, but... They don't know what they're, they're singing because it was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Just like on the day of Pentecost, it says, as the Spirit gave them the utterance. As the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. It's very important that we understand that it's not something that, that a person is taught. 
It's something that happens when the Spirit of God moves on the person. So he says that uh, I'm going to sing with the Spirit, pray with the Spirit, but I want to pray with my understanding also. Verse 16, otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say? Now, what he is saying again, and he gives, he keeps giving example after example because he wants this to be pretty clear or clear of what he's saying. So he says, if you bless the food, if you give thanks for the food in another language, we don't know what to say. We don't know if you did it properly or not. So we can't say amen. It is so to say something is so to say it is true. We have to understand what we're agreeing with. So he said again, another example is that when you bless, when you give thanks, how do we know what to say? Unless we understand your words or unless you explain it to us. So he's given example after example after example. Then he says to us, for you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. And we are taught that we are to give thanks and we are to bless our foods. And, and it's a thing that we need to do to make sure that the impurities and, and the giving of thanks for what God has done and the blessing and the sanctifying of the food that we're going to eat, we need to know what you just did. So he's saying that uh, if you do it in tongues and you don't interpret, we don't know. Now, again, it's not an indictment on tongues. It's not an indictment on the gift of tongues. He's not saying don't speak in tongues. How do you know? The next verse, the next verse, he says in verse 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. And he just said in verse 18, semicolon at the end of that, verse 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. So he's not, it's not a contradiction. He's not saying to stop speaking in tongues. He's saying that these things must be used properly. Now we're going to go a little deeper as we read. We're going to see that he's going to use even uh, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Even when you, when you prophesied or teaching, how would it be if you went into, an, went into a place and you had five people up speaking and teaching at the same time, talking at the same time? That would be confusion. Or talking about three or four different subjects. That would be confusion. That is what chapter 14 is about. Chapter 14 is dealing with order in the church. Not so much a specific gift, but order in the church because of what was going on in the Corinthian church. So verse 18 again. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet, in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also. Paul was not a selfish person. He said, I want to be able to help somebody. Then 10,000 words in a, in a tongue. Now, the 10,000 words in a tongue, he says, yeah, I'm going to edify myself. I'm going to build myself up. It's going to strengthen me. But the truth is that I'm not going to edify anybody else. I'm not going to help anybody else. So he says, I would rather help other people than than." If only speaking five words, then 10,000 words that they didn't understand one word I said. So when he say this, I thank God I speak with tongues more than y'all. Then he says, yet, however, in church, I want to be able to help somebody and teach them. So now, now, as we go a little deeper into this, and you're going to see as this all come together, what he's really saying. And it seemed like Paul is, is taking a long time to come to a conclusion. And that's why I, I refer to at the end of this conversation, the one thing that Paul says to us, therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. He starts off the chapter talking about prophecy in tongues. And do not forbid to speak with tongues. I'll just, just look at that. Don't stop the people from speaking tongues with tongues let all things be done decently in order that's the conversation he's having now we're going to go back and pick up with that verse we left off but every now and then we need to we need to go to the end and see what paul actually is saying for mobile giving text the amount you wish to donate to 
888-242-4242. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank 